Come on. Sound check, sound check, sound check. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, three, two, one, three, two, one, three, two, one. Sound check, sound check, sound check. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, three, two, one, three, two, one, three, two, one. It's a little sound check I do before every recording, guys. You may not have known that before, but now you do. So, we don't keep the, uh, the sound checks. Those are just videos I do to uh, make sure that everything's working correctly. I have my little webcam up here, which you can't see, I don't think. Ah, yes you can. Right there is my webcam, and of course this is my screen, my display. I have the big yellow ribbon in the background because, you know, cancer survivor and advocate. So, I talk into that little green dot up there because I count it down first, and then what I do is, as I start talking, which I'm going to do right now. So, here we go. You'll get to see like an encore presentation of, of what it looks like behind the scenes. Okay, first I have to get my date correct. It is the 28th. So, here goes nothing. It counts it down, but I do my own counting now. Here we go. Three, two, one. Hey, YouTube! How's it going, guys? Jared Fuller here. Today is Sunday, October 28th, 2018. So glad you could join me for another week of the Sunday video update. Joining me this week off camera is Amy. My dad's still asleep over on the couch. Um, so, yeah, it's it's been kind of a rough week. But a good week at the same time, and I'm wearing my Team Buddy Boy shirt this week, as I said I would wear on Twitter. I announced that I would be wearing the Buddy Boy shirt this week on Twitter, or you know what I mean. I'm going to wear it in my YouTube video this week, but I announced it on Twitter. I'll be right. quiet now. Um, so I'm, I, I'm kind of in a good mood this week, uh, or right now anyway. Um, so... I want to talk a bit about Buddy's funeral because that's one of the more important things that happened last week, which was on Wednesday. Uh, it was a beautiful service. Um, there wasn't a dry seat or a dry eye in the house. Um, we had, or his funeral was at Swartz Funeral Home in Flint. And the funeral procession went from Flint through Swartz Creek, the town of Swartz Creek, and then we ended up in uh, New Lothrop at Elmwood Cemetery where Buddy was laid to rest. I took it better than I thought I would. You know, I, I don't like funerals and, and, you know, it's the first funeral I've ever been to that involved a child. But um, I, I took it better than I did, than I thought I would. Because I, I figure... You know, Buddy's not suffering anymore, which is it's always a plus when someone doesn't have to suffer. But um, it, it's better knowing that he's not suffering anymore. He is, you know, he's, he's better where he's at now, although I wish he could have been healed here on Earth with us. But, you know, things just didn't turn out that way. But Yeah. He had to go all the way to Monterey, Mexico, and it, it set the family back like thirty thousand dollars every time. So they're they're facing an insurmountable level of debt that I can't even begin to describe. <clears throat> um, but it, it, his funeral was a neon, or his funeral, his casket was a neon green. I, I'll get it right. I have to drink some more coffee. His casket was a neon green because he loved neon green. And they had like a blanket inside of the casket and it had bulldogs on it. 
because he, you know, he has a bulldog. And so it, it was a nice funeral. And there was a whole body, you know, the, 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 the viewing when you walked up to the casket to see him. It was his whole body from head to toe, which was different from all the funerals that I've been to. Because usually it's from the waist up. Yeah. Well, I could see uh, from head to toe his whole body. And I was kind of curious about, you know, wh wh I mean, how do they decide um, if they want from the waist up or the whole body? And I was talking to my mother last week, and she said a lot of it has to do with religious beliefs. If, you know, they, they want the people who are going to see the person who passed away... They want the viewers to know that it's their whole body that was made whole again. Oh, okay. And that's according to their religion. I, I never knew that. No, nor did I. Because all the funerals I've ever attended in my life has always been from the waist up. Yeah, same here. Um, so even, it was it was interesting. Even Scotty, the, my buddy Scotty Tester, yeah. when he drowned in the pool, um, they had him half body. Yeah. And he was only... Nine, ten years old at the time. Yeah, and I remember that day too when when the news had come. Actually, because we found out on the radio about Scotty Tester when he drowned at Holman's Pool, yeah, in Owasso. Um, he had a seizure. But yeah, with Buddy, I mean, it was just it, it was an incredible service when we had gotten to the cemetery. A Michigan State Police trooper was even there. Wow. To uh, you know escort, so we could send him off. And it was just, it was a wonderful service. The, the, not the best circumstances, but he was loved. That was true testament right there. And that, but he was loved. Those officers that did that yeah. had to probably <coughs> know Buddy Boy and his parents well enough to be able to do something like that. Well, well, yeah, I mean, Buddy had, um, he was well known by a lot of people, including myself, and one of, you know, the, the New Lothar football team was even there at, at his funeral. They called, off, they called off classes for that day um, so the kids could attend Buddy's funeral. I was okay, like, you know, they played a, a montage. I was okay. Doing well up until the point where we got to the cemetery and all the kids started to cry. All of his classmates. That's when my eyes welled up with tears. And it's like, oh man, oh man, you know. it's it, it was it, That was the hardest part. Yeah, seeing that person go. Well, we didn't actually see the casket. Well, I didn't anyway. I, I You know, the casket being lowered into the ground. Because we all cleared. Oh, okay. Because we all cleared the cemetery, and I had driven around, you know, on the, in the driveway, and I had pulled up to where Buddy's casket was. It was still under the tent that was propped up, you know. Yeah. And I stopped, and I rolled down my window, and I said, you won. You beat it. Yep. And then I drove off. Then I went to the luncheon at Watershed Creek. But yeah, I mean, a Michigan State Police trooper was there. I mean, that Buddy had he had some of the most wonderful people behind him, and I was just honored enough to uh, be there to attend his services. I I really and truly love that kid. I still do, and that's why I'm wearing his shirt this week because. Um, you know, I'm really going to miss him. I, I, I do miss him terribly. Um, and that night when I got home from the funeral, you know, after you and dad went to sleep, I just kicked back in my bedroom, let out a good cry. I felt better. Um, that's what's been helping me lately. I just have to let out a good cry and, and, you know, just, I keep telling myself, but he's in a better place. But the you know, and that's that's really something because when I when I you know because everybody knows I advocate for childhood cancer so or the awareness you know and the thing is it's hard not to get attached 
I mm-hmm. I have met a lot of kids in the tenure that I've been a, a an advocate for pediatric cancer. I've met a lot of children, and when something tragic happens, where you know the tragedy itself is the the cancer diagnosis, of course, but when they pass away, or when something happens to where you know the parents are lied to by my opposition, but that's another story for another day. Um, It's heartbreaking because you get so attached to these kids. And when Buddy passed away, it it wasn't, you know, the parents weren't keeping me from seeing him because they're, you know, they, they know better. It was life itself that's keeping all of us from seeing Buddy. Yep. Life happened. He passed away. Um, and death, of course, natural part of life, but so young. That's that's the heartbreaking. And I think a lot of it is knowing what was wrong with him, with the brain tumor that he had. And it? Yeah, it's a, it's, it was an inoperable brain tumor. There is no cure for DIPG, and as a matter of fact... I heard through the grapevine that there's another child from Michigan who was diagnosed with DIPG. Her name is Katie. She lives in Flint. And it's... It's it's a never-ending battle with that. It's, it's not fair. No, it's not. Because DIPG, there's no cure. Well, like I always tell that. Yeah. Why can't they take the evil and leave the good on you know, earth? Yeah, you know, I don't know. I don't know anything about that, but I just know that we live in a democracy, and I've said this time and time again, week in and week out. We live in a democracy where children supposedly come first, but yet they are getting shafted the most, and that includes health care. That includes education. That includes um uh, uh, most things that that general people take for granted, you know. Um, I I can't foresee living in a society or in a democracy where hey we can preach it all day long that hey children come first, but somehow they end up in the back of the line. I don't know how it happens. I'm not a political person and. It's a slippery slope when you talk about politics, which is why in my Sunday video updates or on Twitter or elsewhere, I don't discuss politics. But when it comes to our children now, that's a different story because if, you know, children should be, as as I hear all the time, children are first. Children are number one priority. Well, they got a funny way of showing it because if children were first, these kinds of things wouldn't be happening. But what's done is done. We can't undo what's already been done, but we should be able to learn and pick up from past mistakes. And I think that's one of the things that that drives people to insanity. Because we should learn. We should have already known from this mistake before. It's like we have no learning curve. If this was wrong before, why why shouldn't it still be wrong? We cannot allow for children to suffer like this. There's got to be safer, better treatments for kids battling cancer. And, for God's sake, a cure for DIPG. That's, you know, I, I hope I live long enough to hear the news that, hey, there is a cure for the stuff. And that's what I want to hear. That's what I want to hear. That's what all parents want to hear. And I, I'm not a parent, but, you know, I, I, that's something I want to hear. That's the news that I want to hear. No more news about mass shootings. No more news about all this other bad stuff that happens to innocent people. I want to hear stories that will change our lives. There's a cure for DIPG. There's a, a cure for every cancer known to exist. There's, we, we, we've studied this, you know, from front to back, and we discovered that there is, in fact, a panacea to childhood cancer all across the board. We haven't gotten there yet. And I'm not saying that the scientists or the people who are in the labs 
uh, studying these things. I'm not saying that they're not working or they're not working hard enough, but for a lot of these children, especially with DIPG, time is of the essence, and time is running out, and we need answers. But that's my rant about that. And while we're on the subject of childhood cancer, don't forget to visit GuideStar.org. My haters love it when I share GuideStar.org, Amy. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. Because GuideStar.org is a website that is tied in with the federal government of the United States of America. They have a complete and comprehensive list of 501c3 nonprofit organizations and LLCs. Yeah, and it was shared on the news uh, once before on WSMH. So don't be fooled, don't be duped, visit GuideStar today. And and, and speaking of GuideStar, because you know, I just mentioned that they uh, shared the, the link to the website on the local news, I, I hope that it deters people from even, you know, giving it a thought. Well, hey, I'm going to... Say I have a 501c3 and I'm going to get all this money. I'm going to collect all this money under false pretenses. Think again. You better think twice because um, I will be relentless, ruthlessly relentless, sharing GuideStar.org. And it doesn't resonate well with people, especially my haters. I love picking on them. Um, I, I, and speaking of picking on, and I don't literally mean picking on them, I had done three video recordings over the weekend, um, Twitter safety, narcissism and egotism, and bullying and cyberbullying. Those were the three recordings I did this, uh, over the week, well, not over the weekend. Well, I guess you could say over the weekend because I recorded on, I think, Friday and Saturday. If you haven't had a chance to listen to those, please do. Um, I try to be straightforward and upfront with my thoughts, and um, I hope the videos help. I plan on doing some more of those video recordings um, because it's something that I think would be beneficial to people who may not see things a certain way. Hopefully, I can shed some light on some things by doing the video recordings and... Um, you know, I just want people to be aware of what's going on. But I think we have rain and thunderstorms on the way. Yeah. It sounds like it's raining out right now. Uh, Dad said it was misting out this misting. morning when he went out. Because I saw on Twitter this morning there was a line of showers and embedded thunderstorms moving through Grand Rapids and uh, headed our way. And then Judy just bummed it out because she said it was going to rain all day. So. <laughs> oh, Judy and Owasso? Yeah. Yes. Um, because that ain't going to work because Wayne wants to go hunting tonight. Yeah, it's not good for the hunters. Uh, my dad is a hunter. He's sleeping right now, so he's a sleeping hunter. Uh, but I'd rather he be sleeping here than out in the woods with a gun or a crossbow or, yeah. you know, and, and get into an accident. I haven't heard of many hunting accidents this year. Mm -mm. Actually, I haven't heard of any hunting accidents. So, you know, Dad almost had a good sized buck last <coughs> night. So I'm hoping that by me saying that, I hope I don't jinx it because I, I haven't heard of any hunting accidents on the news uh -uh. at all, which is good. But it's not firearm season yet. We're still in uh, bow oh. season. You really don't hear too many of them during bow, but once it comes gun season... The, the firearms, yeah, that, yeah. Then, it, then it becomes a problem. This is why, people, this is why you are required to take hunter safety courses before you are allowed to get your hunting license. I don't hunt. I, I cannot kill a deer. I don't have the killing instinct. Um, I'm the kind of person that I would much rather look at a deer, watch him frolic in the field, yep. than to kill it. To me, it's too beautiful to kill. But I will say, they are good eating. <laughs> so, it's, it might be a bit of a paradox, but I, I like venison, but I can't kill the deer to get the venison. I don't have it in me to kill a living thing. Right. I just... 
I, I can't. I mean, you know, because even when I'm out on my joy rides, you know, I drive down those forgotten, lost back roads, and that, that's the kind of person I am. I'm a back roads kind of a guy. I love going down those, those roads that time forgot. And when I look out, like, I have open fields on both sides of the road, especially in, in, the, in the spring and summer. You know, you've got, like, the bean fields and the corn fields, which I absolutely love because I'm, I was raised in the country, so that's really the only life I know. So when I'm going down these lost, forgotten roads, I see deer in the, and big groups of deer at a time, big herds of deer. And it's just beautiful to pull, you know, I pull off on the side of the road, put the van in part, turn the van off. I'll sit there and just watch. Because there are certain things in life, like I said, most people would take that for granted. Not me. Not me. I love to sit and watch the deer yeah, in the if field. If it ain't deer, I like all the wildlife. I mean, I... I don't visit, you know, like Chippewa Nature Center in Midland. I don't go to these wildlife sanctuaries or parks or anything like that. I don't go to the zoos. I was talking but, to Dad. There's a place in Manistee yeah. that has wildlife in it. We have all kinds of wildlife sanctuaries here in Michigan. We're known for I told him wildlife. I go find it and go check it out. Manistee's quite a ways up. Dad was trying to tell me it was but, west of us. It is. It's northwest. Is it? It's on the Lake Michigan shore. Oh. See, I've been to Ludington and all that up there, and Ludington's right. beautiful. There's a lighthouse out, you know, in the in the Lake Michigan. But we, you know, I, I don't visit wildlife sanctuaries or zoos all that much. I, in fact, I, I don't make it a regular thing. But I like to see the wildlife when they are free. Yeah. When they are out in the woods, out in the fields where they belong, that is their natural habitat. That's how I like to see them. Um, and it's just one of the most beautiful things. You know, I, I sit there, I'll watch them, and they'll just, they'll, they'll be playing or they'll even be grazing, you know, and I'll just sit and watch because it's beautiful. To me, it is. Just like, you know, if I'm coming home, if I'm on my way home from a joyride, and just when the sun goes down over the horizon, mm -hmm. the the sky is just so beautiful. It, it's different colors. I'll stop, I'll look at it, or I'll take a picture, and it's like, wow, this is life. This is living for the moment. Even enjoying a beautiful sunset to me is relaxing. It's mentally therapeutic. I enjoy the I I enjoy most things that most other people would take for granted. I'd like to go to the bridge when yeah. it's all lit up. Yeah, I I've crossed the Mackinac Bridge when it was lit up at I've four never, o'clock in the morning. I've never <laughs> seen it. And I have the up. video on my uh, YouTube channel here. Um, it's beautiful. What I hear. It really is beautiful. I want to cross a bridge when the when there's a bright uh, hunter's moon. It's called a hunter's moon. Oh yeah. When it shines down on the water and it sparkles, I want to cross the bridge when the moon's sparkling on the water and when the bridge is all lit up. Oh yeah. I bet that'd be beautiful. Yeah. See, I'm like painting this this very beautiful image in my mind of what I would imagine it to be, but with my luck, I would cross it, <laughs> and it would, you know, it would start thundering and lightning, but if there's inclement weather, they will put out an advisory before you cross the bridge, or they'll just close the bridge altogether, temporarily, until the storm passes. Yeah, like they did with my brother. If it gets too windy, they'll put out an advisory, or they will close the bridge. I mean, they've already had snow at the bridge, like blinding snow. <laughs> yeah, that's what my brother said. He ran into a bunch of storms on the way back from Wisconsin. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. We, they've already had snow in the Upper Peninsula. 
And where the Mackinac Bridge is, where the two peninsulas meet, for those of you who are not geographically inclined, um, the Mackinac Bridge is I-75. It, it connects lower Michigan from upper Michigan. And they've had, they've already had blinding snows, like blizzard-like conditions at the bridge, where you cannot see, like, 50 feet in front of you because it snowed so hard. Yeah. Um, Usually they close the bridge, you know, even if it's just like a a, a snow flurry passing through, <coughs> excuse me, they'll close the bridge because, you know, they, it, it's for the safety of the passengers, the people who cross it. The very first, I'll never forget the very first time I, I, I took you and dad across the bridge when I, when we went to Indian Village there uh -huh. in St. Ignace. It was just, Dad's like, this is the bridge? And I said, this is the bridge. And tears come to his eyes. And it's like, wow, I didn't think it would impact him like that. But it did. It did because, you know, it's Michigan has breathtaking beauty. I don't care for the laws in our state, but the laws um, have no bearing on what we have to offer here. In the Wolverine State, yeah. we are um, we are the only state in the whole United States of America, in the whole country, that has two peninsulas. We have the Upper Peninsula, the Lower Peninsula. So, I consider myself to be very lucky to be a Michigander, born and raised, and bred, by the way. Um, but I, I'm very happy to to know that I am a Michigander. I, I love Michigan. I, you know, there's plenty more things that I want to see and haven't got to see yet. Like um, this tourist attraction we have in the Upper Peninsula, it's called the Pitchard Rocks. Never been there, but I'd like to check it out. I've heard wonderful things about the Pitchard Rocks. Um, a lot of my friends, a lot of people I know, they've been to the Pitchard Rocks, which is, it's the shoreline and, and the north side of the Upper Peninsula to Lake Superior. It's it's a tourist attraction. It's called Pictured Rocks National Forest or something like that. I have. I, I've I've heard of it but I've never been there before and I wanna go so bad. That'll be a trip next summer. Yeah. So there's there's my plans for next summer. Oh, did you hear how the plane uh prices are gonna go up? Yeah. The the the, the tickets prices fluctuate. Now, when I went to New York, um, I, I think, personally, I got a pretty good deal. Yeah. Because it was a, a round-trip airfare. I was in New York, not New York City, of course, because when, whenever I say I was in New York, they think I was in New York City. Mm -hmm. No. I would love to go to the, the Big Apple. I'd love to visit the Big Apple. But I was not in New York City. I was... I was in St. Johnsville, which is about an hour west of Albany, their capital. But the round-trip airfare from Detroit to Albany and then back to Detroit was $457. It's not bad, considering that most plane tickets are in the thousands. I don't, I, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of first class or anything like that. I don't care about first class. I just want a seat. I just want to get to my destination and back home. You know, um, I could have driven to New York, but then I would have to consider uh, if I break down along the way. That's one of the first things I had to consider. And the tolls, because they toll you to death. They nickel and dime you to death on, on the Ohio Turnpike, the 8090 stretch. You got to pay to use that road. Um, and... You know, I, I'm taking a big risk of driving that far away. Although, I am planning a trip to Indianapolis. Oh, yeah. Because there's some people that I have to meet. There's a cancer warrior who lives down by Indianapolis. And he and his mother are going to be getting their own place very soon. But they want me to visit uh, after the first of the year. Oh, cool. So that I can drive down there. Yeah. Indiana's just, you know, the next state over from Michigan to the southwest of us. Um, 
So, yeah, I'll, I can drive to Indianapolis. I've never been to Indianapolis. I've never been to Indiana, period. But I know how to get there. Because, you know, they call me Mr. Map Man. Yep. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's it's quite the experience. It's, you know, when you're out driving and you just see different things, things that you've, you you never imagined would, would exist, ever. And it does. But when you get out and you venture out and see things, it's like, wow, now this is life. Even when I drive to Muskegon, you know, I've, I've been to Muskegon quite a few times, and it never gets old. I love driving to Muskegon. I love going to Lake Michigan. I want to plan another trip before the snow really starts flying. Um, I want to plan at least one more trip to Lake Michigan before it gets the weather gets bad. Um, but I don't want to spend too much money because it's starting to get cold and I got to think about getting propane in this house. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just down yeah. Down. It's, it's starting to get cold. These space heaters are going to run up the electric bill, but did we get our light bill yet? Yeah, it's up there. It was only a hundred. Oh, I think, I think I remember. I think I remember. Oh, yeah, $100.40. Okay. You can do that. <laughs> we can do that. Yeah. Um, Three ways, yeah, we got it. Yeah, it's... I don't know. There's there's just been a lot going on. My, um, I was talking to my mother last week on the phone. We talked for well over two hours on the phone. I love talking to my mom um, because of the fact that, you know, my mother and I were not always so close, even when I was a kid. I wasn't close with my mother. I was more close with my father. Um, but they were both there for me when I had cancer. They were, you know, of course, mom was always at bedside. Dad was at work. And, you know, contemporaneously, he would go to work to earn a living, go to Lansing to Sparrow. I mean, it was just, for him, it was back and forth nonstop. He'd be so tired, he would fall asleep in the parking garage, and he'd just, eh, forget it. I'm too tired to walk up, you know, go to the elevator and go up however many floors up that he had to go. But it was a, it was a different time. But I, I love talking to my mom because mom remembers a lot of things from my cancer battle. And not saying that dad doesn't either, but... I've noticed that when I when I bring this up, they it, it's too painful for them to have to reminisce on those memories, and I don't I don't get my kicks from depressing my parents. I'm not trying to hurt them, and although I know it is painful for them to share their memories, they have to remember that you know I'm doing this not only for my own education but for the betterment of the people that I am trying to be a voice for. And my only goal, because, you know, all advocates apparently have goals, um, but my goal was to just, you know, tell people. Educate. Just to tell people that they're not alone. And they've always got someone out here who will understand and someone who... Um, I can personally relate, and that's why uh, you know when I when I do my advocacy and when I do the fundraisers, when I attend charities, I'm doing it for the children. I'm not doing it for their parents. And I know that kind of sounds mean to say, but and I'm when when that happens, like I I attend the charities and these these parents who no longer want anything to do with me, and I won't go down that road of who that is, but it's happened. Um, they believe gossip, and I have to keep telling myself, you know what, I did it for their kids. I didn't do it for them. Yeah. I did it for their children. And sadly, because I'll, I'll probably never see them again, which which really depresses me. It's heartbreaking because I'm, I always give my very best to everybody. And... Because of the big mouths out there who like to spread gossip and they like to come up with these convincing, compelling stories. Um, 
they think they win. They think they have a victory over me. You don't, because unlike you, I actually survived it. I know what childhood cancer is. And, you know, I, I know what that journey is. And, and when I say that, unlike you, I survived it, I'm not talking to the parents who were bereaved parents, and I'm not saying that as a get back to parents. I'm not speaking of the parents at all. I'm talking to the people who are indirectly impacted and they come up with such fabricated nonsense. That's who I'm talking to. And it's just like I mentioned to Dad last week. I think people are just jealous. These indirectly impacted people are just jealous. Because I can actually relate. And for whatever the reason may be, they just don't like me. And I just don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I'm starting to meander more towards the I don't care attitude. Um, because it's liberating and um, it's nice not to care. When you, when you don't care about what goes on or you don't care if people don't like you, you're, you're free to explore and you're free to investigate and you're just you're free, period. You're free. You no longer have to care. Um, but in my heart, I mean, I'll always care. I, I don't think they can take that away from me. Um, but anyway. But Amy, you know what I'm talking about, yeah. right? I would never discard a parent. I would never say to a parent, well, at least I survived. That's insensitive, and it's just not a very nice thing to say. Um, and that's not what I meant, by the way. I was speaking about the indirectly affected people. They have no direct affiliations with childhood cancer whatsoever, but they call themselves advocates, and, eh, forget them. Yeah. But I, I'm beating a dead horse constantly talking about that. Hmm. I have a hole in my cup. Uh-oh. You want more? Is there any more left? Yeah. There's enough for probably two more cups, and then i got to make a cup. Yeah, I'll have another cup. And so while... I won't uh -huh. make another pot until Dad gets up. Yeah, that's fine. And while I'm thinking about it, today is someone's birthday. Um... She has always been a sweetheart of mine. Always been a sweetheart. I don't know if you guys had saw the happy birthday video I made for her. But her name is Angie Wild. Her son Gavin is an actor from Atlanta, Georgia. And so I want to take this time to wish Miss Angie a very happy birthday. I love you so much. You are such a sweet lady. I love Gavin. He's such an awesome kid. And I hope you have a wonderful birthday today. Um, I figured I'd get that out of the way. I, you know, which reminds me, I should text Gavin a little later and see how he's doing. See how, see how mom's holding up for her birthday. Um, hopefully she doesn't drink too much because I know Miss Angie likes her wine. And drink responsibly, Mama. Drink responsibly. <laughs> Yeah, it's your birthday. If you're not going anywhere, tip it back. Who cares? <laughs> I just don't want to see her get hurt. You know, I don't want her to hurt herself or somebody else, you know. Um, not saying that you're incompetent, Miss Angie, but I just, I want you to be safe. I want you to have a wonderful day, have an awesome birthday today, and much love. And Gavin, if you're watching this, I also wanted to say that I enjoy the uh, Did You Knock YouTube series. It's funny stuff, man. It's really funny stuff. Um, I swear, one of these days, I'm going to meet you guys. I'm going to get on that airplane. I'm going to fly down to Georgia, and I'm going to meet you. Um, but I would just have to make sure I have enough money. So if, you know... If you don't want me to bunk at your house, I'll have to find a reasonable motel somewhere. 
and I say reasonable as in reasonable rates. But I don't want to sound too pushy or, you know, too demanding. You know, and speaking of um, video spoofs, I've been trying to come up with some new ideas for video spoofs. I haven't done a video spoof in a while. Um, I think the last video spoof I did was the uh, Just Grin and Bear It. I haven't done anything since then other than the poem videos and the audio recordings and, of course, the Sunday video updates. <coughs> um... Uh, but most people who know me, they know I'm a reasonable person, so I try to keep everything on the uh, line of civility, and I uh, treat everybody the way I want to be treated. At least I try. And she's coming with my hot cup of coffee. Coffee, coffee. Well, thank you. You're welcome. And my favorite MSU Spartans cup. And yes, we. <laughs> it was last week, wasn't it? The game. Yeah. yeah, Dad was furious because Spartans lost. But you know, and, and it's like I said last week, they're both good teams. I, I'm not a football fanatic, and I could really care less who wins. But you they're know, both good teams. You know what's really weird though, Derek, is when it was Michigan. Michigan State, mm -hmm. uh, Michigan won, State lost, well now State's doing better now that they're not against Michigan. Yeah, um, Purdue's doing pretty good. They Are they? Oh yeah, Purdue, they're, they're doing very well. I haven't really been watching I, I, I mean, I, I see it on tw in my Twitter feed, oh, yeah, like okay. they talk about Purdue. I, I don't watch football. But I see, you know, like, um, the, the news outlets, they, oh. they report on the football, you know, the, the big football games and stuff, the teams. I, um, I, I don't watch football. I'm not a football fanatic. But I've been seeing on Twitter that Purdue's doing pretty well. That's cool. I have a friend, her last name is Purdue, but it's not spelt the same. Um, she's a sweetheart, too. Love her to pieces. Um, she's she's another one of my friends. What's wrong? Oh, Scruffy's over here bumping my arm, and I'm afraid I'm going to spill my tongue. Scruffy, go lay down. Go lay down. He's like, I am laying down. I'm being good. Just don't bump my arm. <laughs> but anyway, I, I have another friend. Her last name is Purdue. She's she's been a sweetheart. So, uh, you know, since the day I started talking to her, she's always been sweet to me, and um, I, I was actually happy to get to meet her and her her family. And that's when I went to uh, Sandusky, Ohio. Oh. Very nice people. Very nice people. Sweet kids. Um, because you know, she she knows I battle depression. And she has always, you know, been there locked up. She has always been there. She's been my rock. So, Tara, if you're watching this, um, thank you. Uh, you've, you've been just an incredible friend, and I, I couldn't ask for a better friend. Um, so thank you. Thank you for your support and for reaching out and uh, for understanding because... Depression is, is something that I, I wish more people could understand. I agree. You know, I wish I wish more people would understand what what a depressed person goes through. I'm not I'm not a sad person. I mean I try to stay as active as I can and, and I, I get involved in, in civic activities. But deep down there's something deeper going on that nobody knows about. I can put on a happy face and smile all the time, all day long. But what people don't know in the deep sense that there's something deeper going on, that's what I don't show. Sometimes it gets the better of me, though, I will say. And Amy knows what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Because she's she goes through that 
that same thing. And I'm sure I have a lot of people who watch my videos who are also battling depression. And we're not here to make light of a delicate situation. But what I am saying is, is that we, we know what depression is. We live it every day. We just, we're not always vocal about it. We're not always out front about what our, our personal battles are, what our personal demons are. I'm still trying to get the and, uh, urge up to do YouTube. You should. I mean... Advocate. Because you you have a, you have a camera on your phone, yeah. and even if you have to write something down, and just read it, you know. Because like with the Sunday video updates, like I'm doing now, this is all ad libbing. I don't have any prepared statements right. in front of me, as you can see. I have nothing prepared. This is all ad libbing. It's just right off the top of the old noggin. So, but if I, I would I would recommend that if you do, if you have like a message or, or some kind of a, a mission statement you would like to share with your viewers if you're going to be an advocate for depression or mental illness is to prepare a statement and then just read it. And if you need help preparing a statement, I can help you with that. That'd be cool, dear. Um, but if it's really something you're seriously considered doing... I've been thinking about it. Um, because there is. There's so many out there, and we've got some of them that are literally so bad that where they are committing suicide. Yeah, we don't want suicide. No, no. We, we don't want it to lead to that. No. I, I, you I know. don't want to let them know <coughs> that, you know, there are places out there that are willing to help you with depression. Right. So that you can talk it out. Yeah. There's counselors. There's doctors. There's, there's people out there who will help you, and they will talk to you. They will allow you to talk to them. They will listen to you. and um, Try to work out ways to solve your issues. Right. Because I'm a, I'm a firm believer in conflict resolution. I've always been. Um, if there is a misunderstanding, talk out your problems. Don't, you know, shut people out. Just talk out your problems. Now, with a depressed person... It's never healthy to shut them out because they're depressed and, oh, we, I, I just don't want to listen to that today. I'm having a good day. Well, you know what? They need to be heard. They need to be heard. Well, here a week ago, I was really bad. And I'm sure you noticed it too, Jared. Yeah. My voice, when I talked to you, I kept sound like I was going to cry. <coughs> yeah. Well, Excuse me. we found... That Jay and Dad both use a certain tone with me. When they do, it makes me cry. And yeah, that, that helps me feel better getting that cry out. It's it's there's something about their voice that is intriguing to you. Yeah, because it it brings out your emotions and I you... I have the same thing with you sometimes, but it's a different way. That you do it. I, I, I'm not like everybody else. Yeah. You know, and that was something else I, I was going to talk about for a minute. Um, Sorry, I'm No, 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 you're, you're fine. I, I introduced you to my video, so, you know, you, I, I want you to share. Um, and as an advocate, seems we're on this advocacy thing here. Um, being an advocate for child of cancer, you know what? I'm not like everybody else. I, I'm not these. I'm not someone who, um, and I'm not denouncing or belittling the efforts that these people are doing. But I'm not someone who is a cross country biker. I don't have a. I don't have a 501c3. I'm not doing extravagant, extraordinary things in the world of pediatric cancer. But I'm going to tell you something. Being a survivor in and of itself, to me, is pretty extravagant. It's pretty extraordinary. Um, and it's not to say that not surviving is... I mean, it's not, it's not good that people don't survive. It's sad. It's heartbreaking. But being a survivor in and of itself is pretty extraordinary. And, and living so many years after the, the fact is also pretty extraordinary. Now... We're not forgetting those we've lost. I could never forget brothers and sisters who have passed away. Uh, 
as a result of cancer of any kind. Uh, we keep them close to our hearts, but the re- but the the whole reason that many of us continue on advocating and being a voice is because we do this in their honor, in their legacy, in their remembrance. Perfect example, Buddy Boy. Loved him to death. Loved him dearly. He was a wonderful kid, and by the way, no pun intended, loved him to death. No pun intended. Um, but he is the reason that I am continuing, not just me as a survivor, but he is the reason that I will continue to strive towards cures for for DIPG and all cancers. There, there are people out there without a shadow of a doubt doing extraordinary things. I'm not jealous um, of what you know, most people would think, contrary to what, what goes around about me, oh, Jared Fuller's jealous of, of advocates X, Y, and Z. No, I'm not. Because I am my own person, I am the best person I can be, and I have friends who love me and care about me because I am always being myself. That's the best person I can be. This is the best I have to offer, take it or leave it. A lot of people have left it. That's not my loss. It's theirs. And the same with you, Amy. You you don't have to do extraordinary, extravagant things. Yeah, you, you don't have to have a 501c3. You don't have to go all out like most people do. And which kind of which kind of centers on the whole ego, you know, the, the, ego, the egotism, if I can get the word out. It, it centers around egotism and, and the narcissism that people have. There's a difference between wanting to help and just being an, a, a, a narcissist who's so full of themselves that they don't care about anyone but themselves. And I, I had done, uh, I don't know if you had a chance to listen to this, Amy, but I had done a video, a recording, uh, about narcissism and egotism. And I'm, and I'm talking about the people who have their heads so far up their backsides that they never make time for people who revere them. They always make it about themselves. Now, when people reach out to me for any reason... I respond. I make time for them. And the, one of the things that really floors me the most, and, uh, and I'm not going to put names out there, but I have friends who revere the certain other individual, not my opposition, by the way, um, because the guy, the person, okay, it's a guy, that I'm referring to has a 501c3. He's legit. But he never makes time. He, he doesn't check on my friends regularly like I do but my friends those friends they revere him they think he's just the bee's knees and to be honest with you it kind of gets on my nerves not in, in the face of jealousy but he this person doesn't have constant interactions with our mutual friends like I do I text at least once a day or once every other day to see how they're doing. But they revere these people who never give our mutual friends the light of, you know, the light of day. If not even for one second. They use my th- this <laughs> this person, although he is legit, he has his own 501c3, he uses my friend's kids when it's convenient for him to, you know, have his ego stroked, to look good in front of the public, to look like a big shot. He doesn't, on a regular basis, check on my friends like I do. And somehow, I get pushed to the back. Now, how does that happen? That's that's one of the things that, that I was discussing in that recording called narcissism and egotism. Because I'm speaking from my own personal experience and my own, um, you know, it's, it's just disheartening to me. It, it hits me in the heart because it's like, you know, I make time for you guys 
But you think this other guy over here who never makes time for you is just the bee's knees. He's just, he is the Casanova of, of whatever's going on. And it, it just seems so just unrealistic and unreasonable to me. But anyway, I'm just rambling. But Amy, if you, if you do become an advocate, you don't have to do extravagant things. That's the point I'm trying to make. Yeah. Just be yourself. If you advocate for anything, just be yourself. You don't have to be Mr. Hot Shot or Mrs. Popularity. Just be yourself. People will gravitate towards you or they will move away from you. <coughs> for better or worse, be yourself. And that's probably the best advice I could give. Uh, was there anything you wanted to add to that? No. I pretty much covered it all. Yep, you did. <laughs> like I always do. <laughs> That's um, but, you know, when I do those audio recordings, I'm kind of speaking out of my own um, discontent with how things are going. And I have an opinion about a lot of things, but a lot of the things I talk about, I hope makes sense. I mean, it should be obvious to most reasonable people. It may not be. And I think one of my bigger problems is I give people too much credit. More than what they really deserve. But in any event, the videos are there. The audio recordings. I plan on making more. I was going to write a poem yesterday and just totally lost track of time. But I have a wonderful idea for a new poem. And I want to get started on that right away. I might even do it sometime this week. Because I have that very thick five-subject wire binder that has the lined paper in it, um, it's it's um, th those are my my poem note notebooks. I'm having a bit of trouble speaking today. I'm tripping over my words. I'm tripping over my words. Huh, Jared, he's tripping. <laughs> no, no, no. You know what you need to do is once you're done with your coffee, go get you a glass of Pepsi and maybe you can speak yeah, I need yeah, that's what I need Pepsi. But I, I like my coffee too. I like my coffee. Uh another wonderful friend of mine, her name is Jen Granger, she lives in Lapeer. She loves her coffee. She is a coffee fanatic. She she likes coffee. And she does, excuse me, she does that, uh, what do you call that, Zumba dancing? She, oh. She's a teacher. And her son, Archer, was a, uh ambassador for the Children's Miracle Network here in Michigan. And you know when I go to, to Dairy Queen and Flint for Miracle Treat Day, those are the people, the Grangers, those are the ones that I share frozen treats with, and we share laughs, and we enjoy each other's company. Cool. Yeah, so, yeah, Archer, I, I had written Archer a letter back in, I think, 2009, and he still has a letter after all these years, which I'm very impressed, um, because the letter meant something to him. Yeah. And, you know, he's not a cancer warrior. He he had an accident with a lawnmower, oh, and it okay. severed his, his toes, and um, he was at Hurley, and they saved his life, they saved his foot. And now, I mean, he's in the marching band. I mean, he's in high school. Yeah. He, he and Delaney both, his twin sister. Um, I just, I absolutely love the Grangers. I absolutely love those people. Yes, yeah, she gets with you quite a bit, Jen does. I, I, as well as a matter of fact, I haven't heard from Jen. Jen, respond to my text, please. Uh, no, I haven't heard from her in actually quite a while. Oh, yeah. Um, well, nothing bad's happening. No, nothing bad's happening, as far as I know. I mean, I, I don't... Um, that or she may be just really swamped. Yeah, she's she's really busy between the twins, you know, being in a marching band, and her daughter Alexis goes to uh, CMU in Mount Pleasant. Oh. And... Between work and all that, she just doesn't have the time. But th and that's understood. You know, I'm not I'm not here to whine or complain. But Jen, respond to my text, please. 
Okay? Um, but she she has always been one of the most sweetest people ever. I have a lot of wonderful friends who, um, in spite of all the people who left, because I, I, I thought they were better than what they turned out to be. The people who believe things for no reason. They just up and leave out of my life, and then they write me off as this bad person. Well, you know, I have many more friends who don't think and feel that way. Why? Because they actually met me, although a lot of those parents who have met me had written me off. Um, I have many more friends, people that I've talked to for years on end. They know who I am, and uh, they know what I'm about. John is one of those people who really and truly knows who I am and, and knows what I'm about. And, um, you know, that's that's just who I am. There's I, I'm, I'm very well known with a lot of the TV news personalities. I'm known um, by a lot of the radio DJs in the area. Not as, you know, a plea for attention or popularity or notoriety or press or anything like that, but because we become good friends, you know, and uh, like the people at ABC 12, everybody at ABC 12 knows who Jared Fuller is. If they don't know who I am directly, they've at least heard the name. Um, and, and there's people in radio broadcasting who know who I am. They know who I am. So I'm well known by a lot of people. And I'm loved and respected by a lot of people. Uh, we have a couple of DJs here in Michigan. I'm really throwing out some names today. Um, Nate and April. Nate Rose and April from um, 102.5 WIOG. They do the uh, Radiothon events at Hurley. And when we meet up at the ABC 12 Family Expos, Nate and April are there at the Expo and... and it's like they're always so happy. They're so delighted to see me. And I understand why. Because April herself is a cancer survivor. And a lot of people don't know that. But um, April is like one of the most sweetest people ever. I have. I am very lucky to have the friends that I have. I, I, I consider myself very lucky. I won't say blessed. But I feel very lucky. Because um, they're my real friends, the, pe the friends who don't leave you. They, they, they hear your name, they see you, and you are the reason that they smile. That, to me, is, is the, the best reward in life, I think, ever. Um, you know, just like when I go to uh, Caleb's, I go to Dusty and Todd's, and, and I go see Caleb. Or I go to the Sparrow to see Caleb. Every time he sees me, not, especially when I go to his house, every time he sees me, I kid you not, Jared, you know, he'll get up and he'll literally run up to me and want me to pick him up. You know, of course, he's a four-year-old kid. Why shouldn't I? Um, he's, he's battling leukemia, but he is just, he's, he's a sweet kid. He's a sweet kid. And he wants me to give him you know, play horsey with him, give him piggyback rides, things like that. Sure, not a problem, big guy. Let's play. Or I'll get down on the floor with him and I'll build those little um, mega block things, you know, the, the Legos or the mega blocks. Um, he just wants someone to get down and, and to show him attention and to love up on him, you know. And he's, he's just a kid. That's what kids like. And you got to have patience and tolerance for children, um, especially if you are going to be an advocate or a voice for children. Um, but yeah, he's, you know, I, I have a, a lot of amazing, wonderful friends, people who love me and I love them. And I know that I haven't always been responsive to a lot of people. I haven't always been checking up on people and friends. And I am sorry, I do apologize uh, if you are one of those people that you haven't heard from me in a while. I'm sorry. Um, I will try to get to you very soon. You know, you can text me, you can email me, 
And for those of you who would like to email me, my email address is in the About tab section of my YouTube channel, and I encourage all of you to check it out. If you have a question or if you have an inquiry, inquiry or inquiry, however you say it, um, if, if there's something you want to discuss, please email me, and we'll have a discussion. But in the meantime, Amy, uh, I have been here for over an hour already. Oh. Woo-wee! It's going to take forever to load that one up. It usually does. Um, I don't know why, but it does. But anyway, I'm going to conclude this week's edition of the Sunday Video Update. I thank you all for joining me for another week of the Sunday Video Update. Stay tuned to my channel. I'm going to have more audio recordings. I'm probably going to have a new poem written sometime this week. I don't know when, but I'm going to, you know, go back and, and write some lines down uh, on paper, and I will come up with a new poem because I have an idea rattling around up in my brain up there. You know, there's always something going on in Jay Bear's noggin. So I, I, you know, Halloween's coming up, by the way. How did I almost, I almost forgot that. Halloween is coming up this Wednesday. Oh, and Dad called Uncle Tim's. Yeah. And Heidi Elwood are down. Yeah, I know. I know that, um. I guess they stayed the night. Yeah, because you called me yesterday. Uh, and I could hear I the kids in the background. Uh, I didn't think that they were going to stay the night, Heidi Elwood and Yeah. You know, the kids, um. But they did. But this, this. Wednesday's uh, Halloween, of course, and, you know, remember to um, just watch out for the little ghosts and goblins out there, the little kids. They their, their costumes may not always be reflective, so when you're out driving, please, 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 please watch out for the kids. Um, they're, you know... They're just little, and, and like I said, their costumes may not always be reflective. And, um, you know, they, they, they're they out trying to get their goodies. Um, and, and, you know, of course, there's, there's a, lot of, um, a lot of safety precautions you would have to take with your kids. Of course, if the porch lights aren't on, don't go up to the house. And... And I, this is one thing that's starting to get emphasized more and starting to pick up a lot of traction. Before you take your children out trick-or-treating, study a map of your area of where all the registered sex offenders live. Because yeah. there, are <clears throat> there are registered sex offenders who will have their porch lights on to lure the kids. Yeah. Study your area. Know where the sex offenders live in your area, in your neighborhood. And by all means, please just be safe. Be safe. Um, and, and that's going to be the closing of this week's Sunday video update. Much love to all of you. Thank you for watching another week, another installment. I'll be back next week, same bear time, same bear channel. That's my new catchphrase, you know. That's how I close out all of my videos now. I'm just going to start saying peace out, everybody. And Amy says peace have out. Have a good day. And Dad's still sleeping, as far as I know, or unless he's just laying there and or lying there and listening. Proper could, English, Jared. Could be. You don't have any sleep. Yeah. Years, everything. But anyway, much love to all of you. Have a wonderful week. Have a safe Halloween. Have a wonderful time trick-or-treating. Get all the candy, all the goodies. And I'll probably come back next week bloated. <laughs> because I'm going trick-or-treating with my cousins in Midland. So, I'm going to get my hands on some goodies. Alright, much love guys. Take care and peace.